Whereas most external sound cards only have a sampling rate of 96 kHz, this one has a sampling rate of 192 kHz. But how good is it? Well, let's find out in uh, this video. So, this is the Teratek Orion X-Fire 8.0 HD and it is an external sound card made by Teratek. Now Teratek is a Germany based company which makes a lot of electronics. I mean they make power banks, Ladegeräte, which is German for charger. I think the interpreter, the, the, the translator for the website was on holiday when he created the website because there's a lot of German still on the website, the English version of the website, but still, <laughs> thanks to Google Translate, I know what it is. Um, they also make a lot of sound related products like sound cards and one of them is this one, this is the internal one, but they also make this one, sorry, this is the internal and this is the external sound card. Now, before we head over to the external sound card, which is what this video is about, I wanted to tell you about this one, the Orion 7.1 PCI Express. Now I did a review about this sound card some time ago and I wasn't too impressed with this sound card. I mean, it was okay, it did its job, but it wasn't anything too exciting. There will be a link in the description below. But still, this card had a lot of tricks up its sleeve. I mean, you could use the add-on card to make even more connection to your sound card, which is really interesting. Also, the fact that it is a really tiny sound card and it also has some small form factor brackets, so you could use it in your HDPC. Now, so if you're looking to improve the audio of your HDPC, this, will, this would definitely be a good choice. But that's not what this video is about. It's about the external Teratek sound card. I always start my videos with the specifications and well, let's show you pictures of what's inside. But I just couldn't, well, I couldn't open this little box. Well, there is a little screw back here, but <laughs> for some reason or another, I just couldn't open this up. So I reached out to Teratek and ask them, well, what components are inside? And whereas most other companies will not even bother to reply, Teratek did, and I was really happy with that. And they sent me all the specifications that was inside, or that are inside. Um, they couldn't send me any pictures of what's inside, sadly, but I have found a solution to that a bit later on. Um, but that's not it. So thank you, Teratek, for replying to me. Inside you will find an audio processor in the form of the C-Media 6620A and that one is coupled with the C-Media 9882 and the latter one functions as the codec or the digital to analog converter and analog to digital converter. The amplifier is the APA2306 and is used for the headphone output. It's a USB 2.0 high speed audio compliant with the device class definition V2 it is capable of 7.1 channel in high definition audio and it also has a line in and a mic in and they all support 192 kilohertz and 24 bits. But what does that mean? Now the C Media audio processor isn't anything too exciting. I mean it is used in a lot of other sound cards and nearly all sound cards that I have are something in that range of the C media and it is always coupled with the same codec or analog to digital or digital analog converter and so there's nothing too exciting going on. As for the headphone output or the headphone amplifier, well this is an interesting choice, I haven't seen anything from APA, well, ever. So it was nice to see that one being used. I like products using new components or components that I have never seen before.
Now there's a small button on the bottom of the sound card which says U1 and U2. Now if you select USB 1 or U1, you will be limited to 24 bits and 96 kilohertz and you will also be also only be able to use the headphone output. Now if you want to use the other outputs and use 192 kilohertz, you will have to set it to U2 and also install the drivers. Now the reason for the, this limitation in U1 is because of the bandwidth that USB 1 has to offer. USB 2 has a lot more bandwidth and can easily transmit all the audio over the controller. The amplifier, the APA2306, is an integrated Class AB stereo headphone amplifier capable of delivering 110 milliwatts at 32 ohms. Now this class AB is a bit misleading. It's not like the class A is a lot better than the class B. No, it's just the method of amplifying. In the case of the class AB, it combines the class A and the class B to achieve an amplifying with more efficiency than class A, but with lower distortion than class B. So they're using both methods of amplifying to well achieve the best efficiency. And this is what the driver interface looks like. Now there isn't a lot going on at the moment, but if you right click on one of these icons, you can change a lot of settings like the speaker settings, sampling rate, don't forget to change this once you have installed the drivers, and all the other things like an equalizer, environmental effects, the 7.1 virtual speaker shifter, flex bass, sing effects, Surround headphone, I have tried all of these settings, but none of them were anything interesting. I didn't like them at all. So I switched them all off because, well, I don't see any point in it. Now, overall, this driver interface does look like it, well, it came out of the zeros or early or late 90s. I mean, there's, it's not a really nice interface in my humble opinion. I don't think that Scene Media will ever try to update this because, well, this is just the fun package that everybody buys. I mean, if you have a C media based sound card, this is the audio interface and Teratec only changing their name or changing its name at the top here. So what about those scores from Rightmark Audio Analyzer? Well, in general performance, it gets a good, which is nice to see. The frequency response gets a very good, but as the graph shows, there's a small discrepancy between the left and the right, which isn't that nice. But since it's rather tiny, you won't even notice it. I'm happy to see that the total harmonic distortion gets a good. As with all external sound cards, the stereo crosstalk gets an average. I think that that's because the everything is crammed inside such a small little box. I mean, I have it here, a small little box that well, crosstalk is something that, well, is sure to happen. Now, as always, I did a listening session with uh, this sound card. And overall, it was a, well, a good experience. I mean, the bass was a bit overpowered to a point where it started to bother me in the more bassy songs. And it also smothered a bit the middles and the highs. Not to such a point where it started to bother me, but it was just the bass was a bit too overpowered. So if you're a bass kind of guy, this will external sound card will definitely be something for you. Now the sound stage was a bit narrow, but still it was kind of okay. It was, well, average. Overall, I give this sound card in the listening sessions department a good. And now for the conclusion, what do I think of this external sound card? Well, let's start with the things I dislike and then the things I like and then my conclusion. The things I dislike, well, of course, it's the uh, driver interface. I mean, it looks like it's coming straight out of the 90s or even early zeros, but I don't think that C Media will change this in the near future or ever. What I also disliked was the Xeer stuff. I mean, come on, people. It's cool if you're 12 years old and you want to use the flex bass. But otherwise, stop using it. If you like sound or even are a sort of a sound lover guy or woman, 
You should always, in my humble opinion, listen to the audio as it was intended by its creator. Uh, besides that, the things that I did like, well, first of all, it's the fact that it has 192 kilohertz uh, in every direction. I mean, the microphone in, the line in, but everything that it has going out, it, it all is 192 kilohertz. I really do enjoy this functionality and I wish that there were more external sound cards which, uh, well, support this. A lot of external sound cards uh, will do 192, but will only record in 96 or even less kilohertz. Also what I like about this sound card is the fact that it has such a large volume button and it is also rather hefty. It has this cool uh, back blue background thing once it's powered up but because it's so hefty it won't move around your desk when changing the volume so I really like that. I also like the fact that you could attach anything that you would want. I mean what else would you want? You can use your 7.1, your headphones, your line in, your microphone in uh, it ha even has SP diff in and out. I mean, this is really cool. So it seems there are more things that I like than I dislike, but there is one huge elephant in the room that I must address. And that's the U1 and U2 selector button on the bottom. I searched in my extensive selection of motherboards that goes back to well the <laughs> early 90s when I start, first started fiddling around with computers, but um, there weren't any that were only USB, yeah, there was one, but it was ancient. So USB 1 will never be selected. I mean, this is a rubbish option. Uh, the other one, the USB 2.0, uh, USB 2.0 is also getting phased out. I mean, all new motherboards these days have either USB 3.0 or 3.1 or even Thunderbolt or everything else there aren't any USB 2.0 capable motherboards. Now, of course it's backwards capable, but as Teratek said, using this external sound card with USB 3.0 may not function at all. So it's rather hit and miss if you, this one will function on your system. And that is the elephant in the room. Um, I don't think you would want to spend 100 euros if you get it from Teratek's website themselves. Um, have a hit and miss sound card and you have to send it back. I think that Teratek themselves also know that this sound card is rather hit and miss. I mean, if you look at their website on their sound products, you will find in the archive the Teratek X-Fire. And if you look at their current selection of sound cards, again, it's the Teratek X-Fire. Both the same cards, they're not two versions. So I think that Teratek just has a huge stock of these sound cards and just wants to get rid of it but they're already facing this one out as well. And as for you, should you get one? Well, I got mine for just 15 euros. Yes, 15 euros, I'm rather happy with that. Um, uh, in that case, well, it's if it's hit and miss, it's a nice thing <laughs> if it works. If it doesn't work well, it's just 15 euros. You can always send it back. If it's more than 25 euros, um, I would definitely not get this one and get something else. So, with that conclusion, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video yet again. <laughs> and I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.